Welcome to the Oscars Cheat Sheet mini-series. Why bother having an opinion on this year's Best Picture nominees when you can just use ours? Alright everybody, welcome to the final episode of the Cult Popsha Oscars Cheat Sheet mini-series where we watch and discuss every movie nominated for uh, Best Picture at the Oscars for 2022. I am AJ, I'm joined by my actor friend Aaron. Hello Aaron. Say the line. We're going to do it on the last one, surely. Actor slash friend. Aaron. Woo! There we go. He's, he's currently taking doing his like greatest role of all, which is being my friend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and of course, Richard is here as well. Hello, Richard. Hello. Hello. Richard, what is the final movie we're talking about on the Cheat Sheet miniseries? Uh, it is the current front runner for Best Picture, Power of the Dog. Power of the Dog. <laughs> do 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 uh, so yeah, this was uh, filmed in uh, our home country, New Zealand, mm. uh, mm-hmm. directed by Kiwi, written and directed by Kiwi Jane Campion. Her first film uh, in uh, over ten years, uh, and first really? film to have a male protagonist as well. Wow, interestingly, <laughs> interesting indeed. Um, and it's her best yeah. one. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's uh yeah it was sh- this this was, uh, this was shot during our first lockdown uh in, right um march of last year or um and of 2020 sorry it's two years ago mm. and yeah so we had jesse plemons benedict cumberbatch and kirsten danced in the in the country and you know a few people i think uh, managed to spot them and there was a big sort of thing that um jesse plemons and kirsten danced had their um then like nanny come into the country and you know while people were struggling to get home and there was a big thing about that but it is funny that this is one of the the rare sort of oscar films that we knew about a long time ago just by virtue of living in new zealand and it being and we're making a movie here so it ends up on our on our um on our screens and on our headlines but yeah it is um you know obviously films like dune and whatnot we we hear about long ahead but power of the dog would otherwise would be the kind of film you wouldn't hear about until netflix mm. starts teasing it because yeah, this is was mm. released on netflix uh but yeah yeah the interesting stuff shot in omaru or Amaru. Um, not i Twizel. thought it was shot in twizel you think of slow west the other cody smith mcphee uh western filmed in new zealand rural otago a pavlova western as i yeah. love to perpetuate it its genre as being uh yeah so power of the dog is about um two brothers who are who are ranchers played by um uh benedict cumberbatch and jesse plemons um and through uh jesse plemons who's the sweeter of the two brothers um he he marries kirsten dunst and her son played by cody smith mcphee and the story uh, this is a while ago i saw this but the <laughs> the kind of the main story is basically this like hate relationship between cody smith mcphee and benedict cumberbatch um spoilers for the whole film if you haven't seen it uh basically we learn about halfway through the film that the um Oh, the the long dead cowboy that Benedict Cumberbatch's character has been talking about how cool he was. The Bronco movie. Henry. Bronco Henry. It is heavily, heavily, heavily implied that they were actually lovers and that Benedict Cumberbatch is secretly gay, as is Cody Smith McPhee's character. And so Cody Smith McPhee, they, they eventually, the two of them, form like a friendship. And then Cody Smith McPhee, uh, as a, whose name is Peter, I believe, mm-hmm. um, as a you know basically seduces benedict cumberbatch's character um and knowing he has uh a cut on his hand or something and fix him with what does he fix him fix him anthrax with? anthrax and kills him and that's the movie it was great i love this movie i thought it was so <laughs> good <laughs> It's just it's so it's so slow and it's so brooding and you don't know what it's about till it's over. You know, it's mm. one of those movies where it's like, what's the plot? If if I'm five minutes before the end, I couldn't really tell you. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is also the most nominated uh, film as well. With point, oh, I thought June was. Is it tied with June? Uh, no, it's got two more than Dune. What? What are the two more? 
Uh, well, it also has acting um, nominations. Ah, oh, that, that'll those. do it. That'll do it. Um, Aaron, what did you think of this film? Yeah, I thought it was amazing. Um, I think you're right that there's this sense really the whole way through that you're like, what the fudge is this movie about? But also <laughs> I think there's kind of a misdirection in the film where – I don't know about you guys, but I, certainly when I was watching it, I was like, oh, okay, if anything, this film is about Benedict Cumberbatch's character slowly kind of destroying Kirsten Dunst's character um, from mm. like the time she enters into the house until she's reduced to alcoholism. But actually, mm. they flip it at the end. It's like, no, actually, the slow kind of poisoning destruction was uh, actually uh, Peter on Benedict Cumberbatch's character. Mm, um, yeah, I loved it. It was amazing. The cinematography was incredible. And I remember mm-hmm. thinking while I was watching it, I was like, see, this, this is why you should stop fucking doing CGI on everything. Because like, there are so many things about it that are like just natural shots of nature that are so much better than probably anything you could come up with CGI. Because there's just like things sure, within yeah. nature that are better than we could imagine mm. Mm. yeah i thought the uh, benedict cumberbatch's performance was amazing um it did like obviously because it's like a silent brooding character there wasn't like a an explosive kind of an oscar scene if you will um but mm-hmm. i'd say it's a sort of performance that um yeah sort of builds over the whole film and the final thing that i will say about it in this particular segment is that yeah, uh, say, Aaron, we've got like 15 minutes left to talk about <laughs> <laughs> um is that i don't know if you guys remember but earlier on i spoke about the fact that um don't look up wasn't responsible for the funniest moment out of yes, any of these Oscar yes. movies. Yeah, I, I was I've been um, waiting for yeah. this. <laughs> Power of the Dog was responsible for the funniest moment in any of these movies, and it is hands down. Um, there's a moment in the film where Peter kind of discovers Benedict Cumberbatch's character's like secret hideaway, where he like goes and washes himself nude with like mud and stuff. So Peter that. like. You see his dick, he hangs dong. You yeah. see there's no Oscar scene. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. If you ever want to get an acting award, you just got to get your dick out. In a film. Who has a better a dong? Film. Is it better than Cumberbatch or Bradley Cooper? What's the best penis of the Oscars this year? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. But anyway, to finish the story, <laughs> uh, Peter finds this the stash of um, gay porn, basically, that Benedict Cumberbatch's character has hidden. And then he like exits from the man cave and sees Benedict Cumberbatch's character and then is discovered by Benedict Cumberbatch and is like, oh, God, oh, no. And he like runs away. And the funniest scene is just Benedict Cumberbatch running naked after this boy being like, hey, you get back here, you little shit. <laughs> <laughs> Hands down the funniest thing in any of the films so as for what i thought about this film um mm. i thought uh, i thought it was a piece of shit i thought it was too gay and what does some woman know about the american west <laughs> no i'm just kidding um that is of course uh reflecting sam elliott's comments on the film which i'll get to in a sec but the um yeah i, I thought this film was incredible i have been kind of describing it though i will say as one of those films where like people ask what do you think of Power of the Dog? And it's like, oh my god, script incredible. All like Kirsten Dunst, Jesse Plemons, Cody Smith McPhee, Benedict Cumberbatch, incredible. Uh, the direction is incredible. The cinematography is incredible. Like the the, the storyline is incredible. Films really good. You know, like <laughs> I I kind of found it. It's one of these things where the film is so good it almost holds you at an arm's length to be like no no you need to step back and appreciate how good i am Mm. first before i let you into the story i mean it sounds like you're describing the type of film that wins best picture yeah no and and, and it was like (laughs) um yeah it's just this thing where it's like it's an incredible film but i don't think i was able to fully give myself over to it or, or, Mm. or vice versa um I I watched this film like not knowing it'd be nominated for Oscars or anything. So mm. like, I w- I went into this with a very different kind of like um, like it was just some film I saw popped up on Netflix that was apparently really good. Yeah. So, it w- like it was either this or I was gonna watch The Harder They Fall, which no one's even heard of. <laughs> so clearly I picked the right one because I never watched The Harder They Fall. So yeah. There we go. Harder They Fall is supposed um, to be really good, but um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. talking about uh, Sam Elliott's comments. So yeah, Sam Elliott, the famous cowboy actor, went on um 
Mark Maron's podcast and branded the film a piece of shit. And yeah, said that they make them the the cowboys in this movie are running around like they're an arseless chaps and and there are all these allusions to homosexuality throughout the fucking movie. He said he it's funny they use the word illusions. Um that it's like he he's 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 analyzing it um like in a smart way, but is just real anti <laughs> Yeah, no, it's weird to hear someone just be openly homophobic. Or like maybe he's maybe he thinks he's sounding like he's not being open about it because he's saying things like illusion as if it's in any way subtle that it's about homosexuality. Yeah. But he he does say, yeah, well, what the fuck does this woman from down there, she's a brilliant director, know about the American West, and why the fuck did she shoot this movie in New Zealand and call it Montana and say, this is the way it was. That fucking rubbed me the wrong way, pal. So and- weird. The weirdest comments I've heard. And I thought, I thought Sam Elliott was like, I thought he was cool. He left us, yeah, yeah I, th- I thought he was like surprised. You know, you think he'd be, you know, because he's used in a bunch of like right wing memes of like you'd think about Obamacare kind of thing. But like, yeah. if you knew him in real life, you'd know he's actually this and this and this. But this comment just like plunges him deep into his stereotype, and I I thought this it was so disappointing to hear him come out like yeah this. it is funny though that we because of these comments we did get to see everyone respond to it so benedict Cumberbatch gave this interview where he sort of quite profoundly and quite eloquently sort of said about how it is sad and like it you know it, it sort of exposes that you still have people that think like this and that are unwilling to give themselves over to to art like this and um mm. and and all this stuff um and on the at the dga awards um uh, Jane Campion said, "I'm sorry, he was being a little bit, <laughs> a little bit of a bitch. Um, he's not a cowboy; he he's an read. actor, um, which is great. That, which that's, is su- that's such, such a good, good soundbite. Yeah. And I hope we only hear good Jane Campion soundbites from the DGA from, yeah. <laughs> from here on out. <laughs> <laughs> but um, she also, uh, and then uh, Jesse Plemons, like, oh, what do you think of someone's like, you know, what do you think of Sam Elliott's comments? He's like." I, I thought they were funny like <laughs> he's just like doesn't even give it the time of day um but yeah. i also thought jane another thing jane campion said that i thought was a really really great fucking filmmaking answer was that yeah. she was like the the west is a mythic space and there's plenty of room on the range and i was like mm. exactly you fucking dropkick sam elliott yeah. like you can't say what does a woman from new zealand know about the old west F- shut the fuck up well, it's, it's, what like, is it's, it? it's also like name a west <laughs> and it was probably directed by Sergio Leone in Italian yeah, yeah. in Spain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and also like like name a what what does a New Zealand man know about Middle Earth? Like <laughs> Yeah, it's fucking filmmaking, you dipshit. <laughs> the what West are you wasn't fucking about? real. <laughs> and also, what? like, it's based on a book who was written by someone who lived on a ranch in Montana. Who who does this person think they know about more about the West than me, <laughs> yeah. a guy who never lived in Montana or during this time period? <laughs> it's so know. it's so weird to think that, like, because okay, here's what it is: what he's trying to say is that someone who doesn't know about the Old West shouldn't be making movies about it, which is not true because you, this movie could have had dragons in it and still been a valid Western, right? Because it's a fucking movie, right? And you can make up your own rules. What is actually the problem? I think dragons would have been out of place in the film. (laughs) What is actually, (laughs) what is actually the problem? I'm I'm more saying like your cowboy movie can be about fucking anything. Mm. It's a movie, you know, it can be, different or magical it's like how do you kill a vampire however the fuck you want they're not real yeah exactly (laughs) thank you um where what what he's actually saying is um i'm an old man with homophobic tendencies and this movie took the thing i've branded myself after and said that it could be gay which is something that brand has been trying to run away from since the release of brokeback mountain like that's Mm. what he's actually saying you know like it's so pathetic (laughs) Yeah, and the the day the day she she had said that thing at the at the VGAs DGS. was the, the D, DGAs. I tweeted, um, I I tweeted something that said like, you know, growing up is realizing that Jane Campion was the best New Zealand director all along. And I hit tweet, and I was like, I will never live to regret this tweet. <laughs> and then, what and, then <laughs> and then what? So what happened? At, at when she accepted her award, I don't know what happened. I for, saw your tweet, and I, and then you were like, "Oh, did you see this?" And I was like, "What the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> Oh, so at the at the DGA when she accepted her award for I think best so director. So I th- I thought what happened was that someone was like, "No, this person is obviously the best New Zealand director." No, I'm just saying <laughs> sh- that she is not. Um, well, I mean, I've 
it, depending on what you think of her comments what did she say she was giving her thank you acceptance yeah, speech. so she won best director and was like venus serena referring to the williams um, the king richard is about and said like you guys are great but you don't have to compete against the men i do and it's like we've talked about this a little bit but it's like it's one of these things because people are like you know is this just an example of like white feminism it's like why do you have to why like you know why are you putting down two women of color in your acceptance speech and a, a lot of people are like look it's a, like it's just a joke it's not that she's not really putting them down or anything like that but i think that the thing that i keep coming back to is like you could have said nothing you didn't have to bring up <laughs> venus and serena williams in your acceptance no speech. i know i know and i i'm of two minds about it as well because i think part of me really doesn't want to lose jane campion this like incredible feminist presence in like my home country to like the the swill of like fake white feminism right but also like i think i could see myself sweating my ass off accepting an award and just sort of talking and then saying starting a sentence not knowing where it's going to end realize the the sentence i've started is i have to explain why i won this award over your film (laughs) and just looking for something to say and i think that uh, that is part of what it is. I think it is a racist comment. But, but what the thing is as well that they didn't direct King Richard. Like. Yeah, that's so weird. And also, they do face off against men. And she's she's since apologized and she's since said, you know, I don't know, I didn't mean this. And I feel I feel bad for her in the sense that like clearly it was just like something she wasn't thinking about as she said it. Um and it kind of her whole brand relies on being the opposite kind of person to something like this. Um but Aaron, yeah. what do you make of it? Yeah, I think you you can't you, ca- you I take everything that AJ said definitely, but I th- I think also you can't excuse the sort of like this is a f- this is fucking fucked no, up. Totally, it's kind of totally. a fucked up thing to say, and it's probably something that you know you believe in some realm of your mind, totally. right? Like people yeah. don't just like say shit. Whenever your like mouth goes ahead of your like conscious brain, then it's sort of your unconscious brain taking hold, which is presumably, you know, things that she's thought in the past or whatever. So yeah, from that perspective, it's like clearly there's some fucked up shit going on in that brain of mm. hers. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's obviously also that thing in me that's like, oh no, not Jane Campion. Yeah, exactly. I don't <laughs> want Jane Campion. Um, and also, yeah, I totally agree with Richard's point as well. It's like, how many Oscars, like best actor acceptance speeches do you see that are like, thank you so much for this award. Um, and now I'm going to spend the next two minutes describing exactly why the other people in this category didn't win. <laughs> All right. Christian Bale. I uh, didn't believe aspects of your performance. Oh, you um, put on weight. Well, good, I for, think, good for I you. Think, <laughs> I think part of Jane Campion's public persona is like i am unapologetically feminine feminist and i am a woman in a male dominated field i think Mm. she very much leans into that and that has become why people love her or why people hate her right and so i think in that in that respect she wins best director and so she goes in to try (laughs) analyzing everything jay campion said and she goes into the speech trying to explain basic trying to deliver the message i am a woman and i won and i beat the men and I beat the men. Like that's all fine. No one would. Have, no one cool would have a problem with that statement. <laughs> but, but no, then, I don't, I don't then, have a problem. I'm cool. I'm cool. <laughs> then, 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 yeah. then she Just puts so herself in a corner where she acknowledges two women in the woman room. Woman of color woman of color so yeah and again i'm not excusing it i'm just trying to like reverse engineer why she would have even approached the subject in the first place (laughs) anyway so uh yeah okay well we've we've focused on uh comments made by the filmmaker or about the filmmaker enough is there anything else we want to say about the actual film um he hangs dong (laughs) we covered the um did you like the soundtrack? Yes, actually, yeah. It's, um, the the score by Johnny Greenwood from Radiohead, who's made some amazing scores for um, mm. uh, Paul Thomas Anderson. Uh, yeah, nominated for best um, best score, and yeah, uh, big big fan of uh, Johnny Greenwood's work. Um, did you like the soundtrack? Um, I did, and also 
I guess it kind of counts as the soundtrack, but I feel like one of the sort of sound bites or things you see when people talk about Power of the Dog is like Benedict Cumberbatch is like whistling tune. And I was like, oh man, is he sp-? when I watched the like trailers, I was like, is he supposed to be creepy? Because this is just shit. Uh-huh. And then like actually seeing it in the context of the movie, you're like, no, this is actually pretty powerful. God damn you. I was so prepared to hate this moment in the movie, but it really is quite complex and layered as to why he's whistling this tune. So mm. damn you, you've done it again. <laughs> um, So this is most likely to win Best Picture. I think oh, yeah. we'll all be very shocked if this doesn't. Um, and uh, did we go over what else it's nominated for? Uh, not yet. Um, so, yeah, a couple of interesting things about this, though. So Jane Campion's uh, nominated for Best Director will likely win. She's the first woman to receive more than one Academy Award nomination for Best Director after um, she was nominated for The Piano. Um, yeah, and that made me reflect on like how well New Zealand has done in, at the Oscars in the last... Uh, New Zealand is, I think, famous years. for punching above our weight like it, it, like we like you look at um like at the olympics every time as well that there's there's quite a few things that we're like mm. you know one of the main countries that people talk about despite how small we are we we love a per capita um uh statistic as well because mm. we we do very well per capita <laughs> yeah but show us the per capita yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so, I mean, Power of the Dog, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, Whale Rider, the piano, like, these are all Jojo New Rabbit. Zealand. Um, Jojo Rabbit, Keisha Castle-Hughes, Oscar nominated as well. Like, these are these are all, Anna Paquin yeah, as well, yeah. Oscar nominated. Like, for, for, like, you know, a country that isn't England or America, we show up in the Oscars quite a lot more yeah. than, like, some other countries. Yeah. And that you know makes, makes West us a better country, I guess. <laughs> you know what's messed up as well? Someone was telling me, and I I think this is correct, that um, Power of the Dog is the first time Jane Campion has received funding from Korea of New Zealand or uh, the Film Commission, rather, f- to make God, a film. That would not like, su- fucking surprise like, me if that was true. <laughs> Bro, like, how can you ignore this person who's just, like, consistently just... You know, because her last film was like 10 years ago, and that's probably just because people, for some reason, won't give this lady money, even though every time she makes a film... She did do Top of the Lake in between, which is worth pointing out. That's true. But, you know, like, it's like, why is this... Why does this... Sorry. Why does this person not have just, like, a a, a tap to, you know, funding? Well, no, she could just I, be like, you, you, you apologised. You apologised there, but I think maybe the fact that she is a woman is part of it because she should have as much clout as Jackson and Waititi. Yeah. And yeah. she it's she's almost like the indie alternative to those two. There the, there's the three big New Zealand directors and she's the least famous of the three. And yeah. I think that's probably because she ma- she's a woman and because she makes films that are I I feel like I want to say like more from the heart. Like if Peter Jackson's the like corporate <laughs> corporate yeah. director yeah. in New yeah. Zealand and Taika Waititi is like the wild card Jane Campion is the poet right like yeah yeah well also yeah. like Jane Campion's been going since 1989 I mean it's slightly um slightly after the likes of like bad taste but I mean yeah she's mm. been going for a, a bloody long time well, exactly yeah and yeah I mean the piano was 1993 um and that was you know put her on the I was born then yeah yeah Okay, well, um, yeah. So, so what, um, what what else is nominated for? Um, so, twelve nominations: uh, best sound, best production design, score for Johnny Greenwood, uh, editing, cinematography, adapted screenplay, supporting actress for Kirsten Dunst, supporting actor for both Jesse Plemons and Cody Smith McPhee, best actor for Benedict Cumberbatch, and director and picture. Um, it was interesting. What's it, it going to win? It was nominated Sorry. for um, twelve awards at the Alliance of Women Film Journalists and won eleven of them. Um, the only one it didn't win is that G.C. Plemons lost to Cody Smith McPhee for actor in a supporting role. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are, what do we reckon it'll win, other than best picture and best director? You, do you reckon it's going to get any of these um of the acting categories? I mean, I don't think so. I don't think any. Maybe Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah, I could see Benedict Cumberbatch, but yeah, like you said, Will Smith's probably the favorite for that. Um, supporting actor, I could see going to. Cody Smith McPhee or Jesse Plum. Who else is nominated? Uh, so the supporting for- actor is Kieran Hines for Belfast, Troy Kotzer for Coda, Jesse Plemons for Power of the Dog, J.K. Simmons for Being the Ricardos, and Cody Smith McPhee. It's like one of those. I mean, you've got 
there's twice uh, it's twice as likely that someone from um uh power the dog will win but then you also split the vote um i reckon i reckon it'll go to troy kotza that's my that's what i would think would happen with yeah be, I, i'd like to see that um yeah do, do, let's see like what did it win at the because it did quite well at the baftas it won uh best film best director didn't win any of the um supporting or um let's see what did I guess they probably would have favoured Belfast. Oh no, Joe, Troy Kotza won uh, for Coda at the BAFTAs uh, for supporting mm. actor and lead actor went to Will Smith for King Richard. So the BAFTAs are usually pretty I re- good. I reckon Dakota. those will reflect what wins mm. the Oscars, to yeah. be honest. You're yeah. probably right. Um, yeah, is there anything else? Um, oh, interestingly, that um, Jesse Plemons and Kirsten Dunst are obviously a real life couple. Um, and mm-hmm. it's the first time ever, I believe, that. Um, two real life couples are both nominated so yeah you've got um Plemons and Dunst and then Penelope Cruz and Javier Bardem uh also both nominated and they're married in real life but they they don't star as a couple in the movie no so uh Penelope Cruz are they even the same movie no Penelope Cruz is in Parallel Mothers and Javier Bardem is in Being the Ricardos oh right that's funny they're not they're not even in the same movie but it's still like Mm. it's technically the same statistic cool well yeah it's it's the first time that there's uh, two real couples both nominated um is there any other fun little uh quirks no i think i've gone over all the all the fun quirks Uh, the the (laughs) paul uh taswell became first african-american male costume designer to be nominated for best costume designer uh for his work on i believe west side story are these just the Oscars in general? Yeah, just um, just like sets. I'm just making sure, just wrapping up and making sure we're getting um, uh, all the fun little you know firsts and quirks and stuff. There's also a film called Flea, um, which we haven't had a chance to talk about, uh, but it's the first film ever nominated ever nominated for um, best international feature film, animated feature film, and documentary feature. Oh wow! Cool. Yeah, a foreign animated cool. documentary. Mm. All right. Well, we will be doing one more episode of our Oscars series, which will be like a debrief of the ceremony itself. So stay tuned for that. Um, but otherwise, that is our Oscars cheat sheet. I would love to know what people think. So please reach out and let us know what you think is going to win or what you thought of Power of the Dog. And you can do that by following us on Twitter or Instagram. You can also join the Discord, which there is a link to in the show notes. You can email us at coldpopshamedia at gmail.com or you can throw us some money if you like over at patreon.com slash cult popsha um and yeah that is it that's the oscars cheat sheet i my i think power of the dog's gonna win richard what do you think's gonna win power of the dog aaron what do you think is gonna win and you I can't power say power of the, power the dog, dog. <laughs> oh, <laughs> can't, can't say power of the dog nah. <laughs> oh, mm. if okay. i had to pick something other than power of the dog yeah what do I think will win? Oh, Christ. Maybe Dune? All right. You heard it here first. Aaron <laughs> confidently saying Dune will win this <laughs> picture. If he doesn't, we'll hold it over him for the rest of his life. Thank you for listening, everybody. And we'll <laughs> see you Next year, it's on... like our actor slash friend slash guy who was wrong last year. <laughs> <laughs> no, you just take out friend, just actor slash guy who was wrong. <laughs> actor slash traitor. Actor slash idiot. <laughs> <laughs> A professional idiot model. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see you guys next next episode. Bye.